I would never go as far as threatening you to call CPS or telling you I'm going to whoop your ass. This can't city, yeah. shit's ran gritty. Yeah. In the summertime, the chicks be damn pretty. Yeah. Born in the projects, then to the veil. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Bassy. And I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but I had mentioned that I know for sure on my Snapchat, and I think I put it in my description box as well, I was going to start an Ask Bossy series or segment or whatever. A lot of you guys have been inboxing me on like my Instagram and on my actual business email. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should get another email address for people to ask me stuff. So if you guys ever want to send me any questions, you can just email me at askbossy at gmail.com. Now, honestly, I don't know if I always give the greatest advice, but a lot of y'all have been asking me, so I was like, you know what, why not just make a new email account for you guys to send your questions to me, and then I can answer them to you in a video. So this will be the first time here on my channel me doing this, so this will be interesting. Um, uh, Quite a bit of you sent me questions so I'm going to do as many as I can. I'm sorry for those of you that sent me questions and I'm just, just now um, responding. Some of you guys, I actually did respond back in the email, but I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So this first one um, is just basically it says advice needed. It says, hi, bossy. Hi, boo. It says, love, love, love your story times and beauty videos. Thank you so much. You seem very down to earth and relatable, and I would love to get your advice on an issue. Sure, I'll try to give you the best advice that I can. Okay, it says, oh, and she's older than me too. Great, you want some advice from me? Okay. <laughs> she says, I am a 34-year-old single mom of a 10-year-old daughter. I struggle with depression because I've never been in a real relationship. I've been settling for being a fuck buddy for the last few years. I act like it's okay since I get much needed sexual fulfillment whenever he calls me. But it's weighing me down heavily. I am sick of being used for sex. I told myself I'm going to end things with him, but I crave sex and don't have anyone else to care. Okay, what? I told myself I'm going to, okay, what the hell? Hold on, I'm reading too fast. See, that's why I shouldn't be doing these videos. Okay, I'm sick of being used for sex. I told myself I'm going to end things with him, but I crave sex and I don't have anyone else to take care of that. Okay, I got you. Also, I have no friends or social life and I'd really like to start getting out and meeting new people. I want to be happy. I want to be in a happy monogamous relationship for once, but sadly, I think I'm destined for a meaningless, lonely life as a mom slash fuck buddy until he kicks me to the curb. Thanks, forever lonely girl. Ooh, child, honey. Mm. Okay, if it were me, for years and years, I don't think I could be a fuck buddy. Now, I've had, um, you know, an instance, which now I'm in a relationship with this individual, but where I just wanted to have a friends with benefits situation and it was beneficial for me and beneficial for him. But at that point in time, I wasn't really like emotionally connected. So I wasn't really worried about being in a relationship with him um, until a little later on down the line. But as far as years and years of being a fuck buddy, that's something I could not do. If you crave sex that much, buy some toys, honey. Because I'm positive there is a man out there that is willing to be in a relationship with you. And you said you're 34 years old and you've never had a real relationship. Now, you said you have a 10-year-old daughter. Did you ever have a relationship with her father or was that another fuck buddy situation? Um, if it wasn't, what was it that happened in the relationship that didn't last? Is it something that you're doing that maybe 
the man is not willing to say, this is the type of girl I want to be in a relationship with, you may need to step back and evaluate yourself. You really shouldn't, especially with having a 10 year old daughter, you should not just be settling for a fuck buddy for that long. Especially you said years. It's okay if y'all doing stuff for some months, maybe I even give you up to a year. But if you're having feelings for this man and you feel like the only way for you to be close to him is to continue just being his buddy, and if that's all he really wants from you, I would leave him alone. I mean, you should value yourself more. I know we all go through our stupid periods because trust and believe, girl, I went through hella stupid periods. Um, but I mean, now as I am... You know, I'm older, I, I have children, and I don't want them seeing me make these silly mistakes. And you have a 10 year old daughter, you don't want her to do the same thing. You need to step back, let him go, or even talk to him. Ask him if there's a, a reason why he's only wanting to sleep with you and not go any further. And if he's just like not that type of relationship dude, you need to let him go. You're 34 years old. I'm sure one day you want to get married. I'm sure. Well, time is ticking, but you may even want to have more children and you just being a buddy, you just being a fuck buddy is not going to get you what you want. And honestly, your depression would go away if you dropped your fuck buddy situation. Like, that's why you so depressed. There is someone for everyone. God will put that person in your life, but you're going to have to stop opening your legs for this individual that clearly doesn't want to be with you after years of being a fuck buddy no if he ain't took you out to eat if he ain't took you shopping if he ain't did all this extra stuff but all he gave you was the dick that's not good enough so all i can say for you is take your time for yourself reevaluate what you want in your life drop him focus on your child focus on just your you being happy first and then everything will fall into place so I hope that helps. I really do. So the next one says, hello, Bossy Bossima. I think I spelled it right. Oh, you forgot the H on Bossima, but that's okay. Anyway, my name is, I'm not gonna say your name, girl. And I'm one of your loyal subbies on YouTube. Love you, your story times, and the fact that you are open without a care on who has what to say. I can only pray to be that confident and carefree one day. I'm sending you this email because I need some suggestions and I trust your word. I currently live in New Jersey and I am four months pregnant. I am planning on moving out of New Jersey once I give birth. I am determined and do not want to live in Jersey any longer. I know you, I know you said how you live in Missouri. So I wanted to know if you think I would like living and raising my child in Missouri no, I'm not trying to come and stalk or anything crazy like that. It's just that my child's father is totally against going down south. I suggested North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. However, he's afraid of going down south and feels the racism would be worse. Watching you, I feel as though Missouri would be a nice place just because of how cool and down to earth you are. So what do you think, honestly? I'm desperate to move on and start a better life. Um, I mean, if you don't want to live in Jersey anymore, I mean, like, what's the reason? Are you just tired of it? Or you just want to have a fresh start? Is it affecting your relationship staying there? Or are you just ready to just move on? I mean, um, as far as the suggestions of states you wanted to go to, I mean, if your boyfriend feels that it won't be a good fit for you guys, then... I don't know, maybe you guys need to do more research about these particular states that you suggested and you know, just weigh the pros and the cons as far as the cost of living and just the environment, the schools and the neighborhoods and everything like that. Um, I really can't give you advice on if you should move to Missouri where I'm at. I've lived here all my life, so I'm used to it. Uh, one day, who knows, I might move from here. I mean, uh, it's a lot of crime and stuff that goes on in Missouri that I don't care for. So I'm not saying my state is a bad state to live in. It's just certain locations are better than others. But I mean, you honestly need to do what's best for you and your family. Uh, but if you want to come to Missouri, I mean, come.
come to Missouri. But I mean, I hope that helps. I really can't tell you if you should move here or not. I mean, I'm used to it because I've been living here since the day I came out the womb. So yeah, I don't know, sweetie. So sorry I couldn't give you the best answer that you wanted. All right, the next one says, hi, bossy. You don't have to do a video on this if you don't want to. I just needed an outside opinion and get genuine advice. Please ask Terrence too, so I can see from a man's point of view as well. Here it goes. Well, Terrence isn't here right now, so maybe he'll watch this video and comment in the comments about what he thinks. So, um, it says, my husband and I have been married three years. We got married young. I was 19 and he was 20. Okay, that is kind of young. Two months after being married, we found out I was pregnant with our daughter. We live in California because I was in the Navy. Okay, fast forward. I got out of the Navy in March of this year. We moved back to our hometown, St. Louis. Okay, you near me, girl. Since we have been here, it's been nothing but drama with his family. Mm. Just to give you a little background, I have cheated on my husband in the past. Girl, uh, I don't like cheaters. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me finish reading it. Not sexually, just small stuff like talking to my ex and flirting. Nah, see, I don't even like that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because that leads to other stuff. You said it didn't. But anyway, let me finish reading. Let me finish. Okay. See, I can't do this advice stuff because, okay, let me, let me stop. His family knows about this. That's why, girl. <laughs> In June, my husband ended up getting into a fight with his younger sister's boyfriend. I tried to break up the fight. And in the midst of me trying to break up the fight, his sister said I hit her, which I'm 100% I'm sure I didn't. So that became a big deal. She ended up admitting she never liked me because of the things that I did to her brother and said I took her brother away from her. A couple of weeks later, her sister and I, okay, a couple of weeks later, his sister and I squashed it and she went to college. So a couple of days later, my husband's mom pulls up at our apartment and him and her start arguing outside. Once again, I try to get them to stop. I didn't touch anyone. I just told him to come in the house and asked her to get into her car. I wasn't doing this stuff to be in their business or anything. I just didn't want stuff to go too far and the police to get called. I don't have I don't have no money to be bonding him out. Later on that day, she sent me a nasty text message saying she's going to beat my ass and everything else. Girl, look. Hmm. Huh. Okay, let me finish reading this. <laughs> and and she's going to call CPS and get my daughter taken away. Uh-uh. I wasn't worried about CPS because I know damn well my daughter is well taken care of. But it's just the fact that she would say something like that. I responded calmly trying to explain myself, but to no ill, she kept going. My husband defended me and we haven't... My husband defended me. Huh? Oh, okay. My husband defended me and we haven't spoken to her in months, nor has she seen my daughter. She has reached out to see my daughter, but she will not apologize. Recently, my husband has been hinting around that he wants to make amends with her. Today, he went to meet up with her to talk. He told me I couldn't come, which I don't understand because the problem was with me. And then he says that... And then he's saying that he wants my daughter to start going back over there as well, which I really don't want. He tell he's telling me he's telling me to move on and let it go, but how can I and she still hasn't apologized. I feel like he is disregarding my feelings. I don't know what to do at this point. What should I do, Bossy? Girl, um okay. I'm about to be really honest with you. <clears throat> if I was his mother and I found out that you cheated on my son, whether it was physical or, you know, emotional or anything like that, I might feel a certain type of way about you, but I would never go as far as 
threatening you to call CPS or telling you I'm going to whoop your ass. Um, she was totally out of line for that. Now, yes, I would probably tell my son, um, y'all need some counseling or you just need to leave her alone. I don't feel it was her place to threaten you, um, and especially threatening you with the whole CPS thing because I would hurt somebody over, over that. Mm -mm, no. As far as him wanting to you know, start taking your daughter around her, but you feel you deserve an apology. I 100% agree. She does need to apologize for saying the things that she said to you. But you need to also speak with her about the whole situation that has to do with her son. That may have really bothered her. Um, Y'all need to really sit down and talk because that's not going to be good as far as that's your husband you have a child you guys are going to have to see his mother that is your child's grandmother so i mean i kind of can understand where you're coming from but at the same time you know that's his mom but you guys all really need to sit down and talk the fact that he did not let you go i still would have went anyway not you gonna tell me i can't go the issue is with me not with you so you should have been there to talk to her tell her what happened tell her how you would like to fix it going forward in the future for your family for your child he should have just been like okay baby come on but I don't think it's enough to where it should end your marriage or anything uh, because she was just given threats. But if that type of behavior continues, then y'all may have to reconsider your relationship. Especially if your husband doesn't feel that his mother is 100% wrong in her actions. Um, and if he wants to bring your daughter around that type of environment. Okay, so the next one says, Hey Bossy, I'm a huge fan of your videos and I have been since I saw I didn't know I was pregnant. I just turned 18 years old in April and I am finding out now that I am pregnant. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not super young, but it's still scary. I am still with the same guy and we both want to keep it, but are worried about finances and being good parents and such. Do you have any advice? Well, I can say, I mean, it's good that you want to keep it because abortion is really not the best. It makes you feel a certain kind of way and having abortions is not the best route to go. Trust and believe. Do you guys work? I mean, is he working? I mean... There are programs out there that can help you if you feel like you're going to need financial assistance. I wouldn't stay dependent on those programs, but if it's going to help you out, there's there's food stamps, there's um, Section 8, there's, or I don't know what it's called in other states, um, there's, um, you know, WIC and all of that kind of stuff. But I mean, if you guys are working, with you, I would work up until it's almost close to time to my due date. With him, he needs to continue working. Just say, you guys actually living together. Um, if you're not, um, then you guys really should have an easier time at, you know, saving money. If you're working and staying with your parents, you should be able to save. If he's living with his parents, he should be able to save. I mean, unless they're making you guys give them, you know, money to stay there. Still, you guys should be able to save since you're not living together and you don't have to pay a bunch of bills. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. In my situation, when I was pregnant, because I did get pregnant at 18, or was I 18? Yeah, I got pregnant at 18. Um, I lived with my mother. And I did work various different jobs because I couldn't stay at one job. But uh, I did work at various jobs. But my mother, she didn't make me pay bills. So whatever money I did have, I would put it up and try to save it and not try to go spend all my money on baby stuff. Um, but I did try to, uh, you know, save it and, you know, be responsible with the money that I did have. So, I mean, it's very possible um, but if you guys are living together, you guys just need to sit down and make a budget. It's not very difficult, um, 
I can't really tell you didn't have a lot in the email but I, or do you live with your parents or not like um, but I mean based on what you told me it, it's easy you just have to make sure you're not going out spending a bunch of money and you know not being responsible now that you are having a child you have to think about that child first over yourself so I hope that helps I wish I had a little more information but I mean just try to be responsible as you can be and think about the child's needs and just add up everything that you're going to need for that child before he or she is born um, you know go online do 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 some research and you'll find but kids can be expensive but only if you make them that expensive they just need the basics love food clothing and to be cared for so yeah um but again i'm glad he's there to help you so with both of you guys there together i'm sure you will raise a very healthy and happy baby so uh, let's do this next one so your stranger danger story time really hit home for me. When I was seven to eight, my 17 year old adopted male cousin tried to molest me two different times, Lord. He told me my dad would whoop me if I told anyone and I believed him. I was so scared I never told. I haven't been around him since then. When I met my fiance, I ended up telling him who exactly tried to do that to me. I didn't think it would matter too without my cousin's identity because I figured since I had not seen him in over 13 years, my fiance would never meet him. Well, my aunt just notified us that my cousin and his kids are supposed to be coming for Christmas dinner. I really do not want this to get out of hand because my parents would be so hurt that I never told them and my dad well he would hurt this boy I know my fiance wouldn't just outright say something but I know he will probably end up putting his hands on him then everyone is going to be wondering what happened and then it'll end up coming out I'm really trying to protect my dad from going to prison or something should we just avoid Christmas dinner okay um well if i were you i would tell my parents now before he gets here that way it won't ruin the holidays um and i mean it still could but i would tell my parents now that way you guys can fix this situation um, before the holidays come because of course you don't want to ruin it for everyone I, I I'm sorry that you went through that I know it probably was a scary situation another thing is uh, you guys could just try to have your first Christmas at your house by yourself that way y'all won't even have to be in that situation but what it sounds like is if he's gonna start coming around more to family activities and dinners and functions you're going to have to eventually tell someone or address him. Uh, otherwise, you won't be going to know family stuff. So just really think about either talking to the individual first or your father and your mother first. Because at some point, they're going to have to find out or something. I don't know. Okay, so here's the last one for y'all. Hey gorgeous, I watch your videos every time you upload. Stay doing what you doing and you and your family are beautiful. Okay, I'm 16 years old and I lost my mom two years ago. I wanted to know, is there anything I can do to keep a smile on my face because I'm always being silent and not talking um, because most of the time she's on my mind. When I lost my mom, I lost everything. She was my best friend. I would be happy if you could give me any tips. Love you, bossy. Love you too, girl. Okay. I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but I lost my mother in 2014. So my mother was really, really one of my best friends. She was like the bomb. Like she was amazing. I know how you feel. Um, when I would go to family functions and she wasn't there, I wasn't as outspoken as I normally would be. Um, I would be more standoffish uh, than normal. Of course, when she was alive, I, I was 
you know, more social. But I mean, what helped me is honestly just knowing that my mother is not in any more pain. Like she went through it for a long time since I was little. So just, just knowing that even when I have my moments of being upset or missing her so much, I think about the fact that she doesn't have to take all those medicines that were killing her. She doesn't have to go to the hospital all the time. She doesn't have to be depressed about her sickness. She doesn't have to worry about if she's being a burden to us. Like she is in a better place. There's no more pain. So that is really what got me through it because I took it hard with my mother and I'm sure you probably did the same. Me being around family is really also what helped me. I would have my moments sometimes, but you know, they would just cheer me up and things like that. So maybe if you just try to think about, you know, her no longer suffering. Now, I don't know how your mother passed if it was in a more violent way maybe try to um, joining a support group or talking to close friends just to vent to get it all out of your system um, support groups can help um, you know if she was if she passed away due to gun violence there's a lot of support groups and systems that can help you um, like I said if she had an illness um, just really think about her not having to fight anymore and you know this is kind of a touchy subject for me because everyone handles death differently. But this is just what I did and I'm just going to give my advice to you. So, like, yeah, just knowing that my mother was no longer in pain and me not being selfish because I wanted her to be here even though she was going through pain. I had to stop being that way and just realize that Yes, my mother's not here, but she's no longer hurting. And then I just kept myself around my family, my children, everything like that. You're 16, so it still might be a little harder for you. I'm up in age, honey, so I was prepared for this. Um, even though I was still in my late 20s when she passed, I was still very much so prepared for that. Um, so if you weren't, you know, you really need to talk to your, your dad if he's around or friends or just close family or someone that could probably understand what you're going through. So, I'm sorry that your mom passed away. Um, trust me, I do understand how you feel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I hope that helps you, love. And, and just know that your mother is in a better place. All right, so this is the actual last one. I thought the last one I read was it, but no, I'm sorry. I, I missed this one. It says, hello. Hello. Um, it says, I'm currently trying to be celibate. I'm 20 now, but when I was 19, a 35-year-old man pursued me. And at, at, fir and at first, I wasn't paying him any attention. He wanted me to have sex with him so bad, and I was just, and I just wasn't ready at the time. After a year of him pursuing me, I ended up losing my virginity to him. Lord. I blamed and faulted myself because I knew better, but I knew that he really liked me and he made me feel comfortable. I was raised up in the church and I know that I was supposed to remain pure until marriage. I still have feelings for him and I can't seem to stop having sex with him. Mm -hmm. He is like the only guy that I can have sex with. I am not even attracted to anyone else and I can't even have sex with anyone else but him. <laughs> Can you please give me some advice as what I should do? Thank you in advance. Girl, did this man whip you, girl? You lost your virginity to a 35-year-old man. How old were you? Okay, you was 19. You were still legal, but 35, like, 
I don't even see at 19 how I would even be able to be attracted to a 35 year old man. Like that's a big age difference. But I mean, whatever floats your boat. But me personally, you said, you know, it's not right. You're in the church. Is he in the church? Like if that's the case, if you can't stop having sex with him and you don't want to have sex with no one else because you know it's not right to have sex before marriage. That kind of messed me up. You said that you can't stop having sex with him. Well, then if you can't, see if he wants to marry you since you know it's not right. And at 35, he's pushing 40. He should be ready to settle down. So see if he wants to marry you. Yeah, you're not 20 and you're young, but if he wants to marry you, uh, then, um, that solves your problem right there. Then you won't have to feel bad about it. But if he's just having sex with you just because, sweetie, you said you're 20 years old. Honestly, I wouldn't waste my time with this man. He's not your boyfriend. Y'all just have sex with each other. Let me see. Cause y'all emails be, I'm sure you probably fell in love with the man because he was your first must have talked you out of your drawers that good because now he's messed up what you were planning to hold on to until the right man came along and you were married so okay does he like you um are you guys headed towards a relationship what is it that you're doing are y'all just having sex casually what is it you only have feelings for him you don't want to be with anyone else you don't want to have sex with anyone else which is a good thing because you shouldn't want to have sex with a bunch of different people but are you trying to be in a relationship with you, with him is he trying to be in a relationship with you what is he trying to do I'm just a little confused so i don't know what advice i can really give you for that but yeah i hope y'all enjoyed this video um please if you have any questions check the email down below in the description box and i would love to try to answer them the best that i can like i said i don't give the best advice but we're gonna try to see how this go and anybody that has any input on any of these um that i read leave them down below so that the individuals can see the responses try to be respectful but still leave down you know some advice on what you would give these young ladies because i'm sure they're all women i think so so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, loves.